these people are right. See, there'd been one man by the name of Ron Short that had stood between me and the gates of hell. One man that had witnessed to me about the love of Jesus for five years before I became ill. One man. And, you know, I would debate him. And I liked him because he did what he said he was going to do. I mean, he was the only one that I saw that professed to be Christian that lived what he said he was going to do. Uh, and so I, I really respected him. I didn't believe what he said, but I respected him. But when I'm laying on my deathbed and knowing that I'm going to die, guess who I thought about? I thought about, what if Ron is right? What if there is a heaven and a hell? And so the most immediately, immediately the most pressing thought in my mind is how do I get saved? What is saved? What is saved? How do I get saved? And so I sent them for Ron Short. I wanted him to come down uh, because I wanted him to do ever what he had to do. I had no idea. How can a man hanging on a tree in Israel 2,000 years ago? What is that to me? But I knew that he had something that I had to have. And that night, see, I had him go for Ron, but Ron wasn't home. Ron was in Alabama. And so I had him go and send for Ron. And that night was the longest night that I've ever had in my entire life before or since. And that night is as I would be laying there in bed. As I'm laying there in bed, I would begin to fade away. I would begin to fade away, and as I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. And as I left, and I can tell you I left my body because I remember when I came back into my body. You know, I don't know where I was out of my body. Now, there are people that talk about the, the, a light. There are people that talk about floating above. There are people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt untold terror. Untold terror. Because I knew that if I ever went all the way, if I slipped all the way, I would never get back. Now, in my beings of beings, I knew that. And so I fought all night long. They told me later on, I not only pulled the mattress cover off of the mattress, I pulled the mattress up on me because I had to stay. I had to wait. I had to wait till Ron got there. Whatever he had to do, I had to wait. But I would, again, and then I would leave, and I would, I would be going down like a deep, deep, dark terror. Now, my, my skin began to get cold. Now, it's not like cold when you walk out into the air. It's like bone, bone chilling cold in my lower extremities. And you can feel the coldness begin to come up the legs. And again, I would begin to leave. Now, and I would be in that darkness, and I'd be in that void. Uh, and I remember one time entering back in my body, because when I entered my body, it was like, just like that. I felt my body thud, my physical body thud when I entered back in. Now, I, believe me, believe me, that is the most horrifying, terrifying experience that I've ever encountered. And I fought all night long. And the next morning, somewhere 9, 30, 10 o'clock, in came Ron. And Ron came in and he says, Dr. Whitaker, what do they say is your chances? I said, Ron, they tell me I have none. He says, now's the time. And I said, you're right. I mean, I'd cursed him, I'd spit at him, but now was the time because I had to have whatever he had because I had a short period of time on earth and I didn't know have any idea when I might make that trip and go all the way. At that time, Ron 
led me simply in the sinner's prayer. Now, I had no idea what the sinner's prayer was, but I, see, I trusted Ron, but he led me in the sinner's prayer and told me that Jesus had died for my sins. He had died for the sins of the world. Uh, I didn't quite understand that, but I knew, you know, he showed me in the Word of God where it said that. Now, you have to understand, I'm a man of books. I've spent a big part of my life, 25, 26 years of my life, in books, uh, in, you know, all types of scientific books. Uh, chemistry, like I said, degree in chemistry, advanced degrees, uh, all the way out to the medicine doctor to practice medicine, all of these degrees. So he told me, and I believed him because it's in this book, and it was a new book unto me, and it was called the Bible. And so I led, I, 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 I let Ron lead me in the sinner's prayer, and I, I said the sinner's prayer after him, and I can tell you one thing. There was a peace that came over me like I had never known. I'd search for that peace. I'd search for it in the bottles, alcohol. I'd search for it in needles. I'd search for it in drugs. I'd search for it with women. I'd search for it with all types of places. But there was no peace in my life. But once I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was no longer afraid. I still believed I was going to die because I knew the condition I had is that you do not survive it. I knew that. I'm a physician. I knew what I had. You did not survive. And he shows me in the Word of God. It says, these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I walk around on planet Earth this day taking no insulin, taking no enzymes, eating whatsoever that I might. And God produces in my body every day the correct material for me to function without having to take medication. You know, when you see blind eyes open, you see the cripples walk, you see the leopards cleanse, and you see them with your own eyes, you know, you, you see that. Then it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, you know, the Bible is true. Evil is poisoning our hearts with perversion and malice. On Romans 1, 20-32, Paul describes, It begins with a rejection of God. God gave the human race clear evidence of his presence and identity, yet they continued to lust after sin, even though it dishonored their bodies and caused God to chastise them, as Paul records in verses 24-27. God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts, to impurity, and gave them over to, degrading passions. In all of their perversity, they begin to demonstrate a hatred both for God and for other people, being filled with all unrighteousness. And not only are they sinking deeper into sin, through this lifestyle, but they encourage others, to join them. Jesus condemned pornography, Adultery of the heart may not seem as bad to you, as the actual physical act of adultery, but it is in God's eyes. Mankind has the tendency to form his own conclusions about right and wrong, but the Word of God has already removed most of the gray areas for us, 